Hello and welcome to my project. I had three goals for this project. One, make an object float steadily. Two, use the lowest cost components and build as much as I could. And three, create a system that learns. One challenge I liked about this setup is this is a dynamic system. A steady airflow will not keep the height steady. There is randomness from turbulence and airflow rotation. And also the sensor is not accurate at all. The Raspberry Pi board itself. This is a great piece of technology. It is not super powerful, but it integrates a ton of functionality into an affordable package. It is also fairly small. I mean, look at the size next to my phone. To generate the airflow, I use a plain PC fan. It has a four wire control and I attach that to a target nut container. I shop a lot of Target, so one of the goals was just to use Target products as much as I could. I took the nut container, I made a couple openings, uh, so allow the air to freely flow in and hopefully straighten a bit before going into the setup. Attached to that is also two Target vases. They are used to constrain the air and also the object. However, the air inside because of the fan is turbulent and it has a lot of rotation too. So to help alleviate that, I thought a lot about it. I ended up using an old binder and tape and created, created a grill that doesn't eliminate the problem but makes it to a manageable level. So there is a level of, of error in the system and turbulence, but not as much that would disrupt the system. Here is how it fits. And then I would, use, I would close the, uh, the setup with the other target face. This is the actual floating object. It is made of egg carton material. Why? Well, it just so happens that the material is strong and light. And why this configuration? Well, I use this configuration of two discs connected by a straw to make it stable within the cylinder. It can move freely, but it maintains the, the orientation fairly well. So this is how the system gets assembled. Now I just drop the floaty inside of the setup and next I'll show you the sensor itself. To measure how high the object floats, I use a really low cost ultrasonic distance sensor. The accuracy is almost plus or minus an inch and can overheat if you use too aggressively. I built it into the second target base and made openings for the air to come out. I thought using this sensor illustrates very nicely the challenges of not having enough data, the data itself not being very accurate, but still having to make real-time decisions with it. So next, I'll show you how the two bases fit and then we'll run the setup. So this is how the two bases attach. The system runs about two feet long. Inside the tubes, the diameters vary, which makes the system non-linear. The length is within the sensor range, but still allows the fan to be able to push the object up and down. So next, let's take a look at the homemade power supply I made. For the power supply, I bought discrete assemblies. I basically made my own box, which made it really cheap to create. Power supplies can be expensive. This one has 12 and 5 volt outputs, which I can reuse for other projects. So let's move on to the actual code and, what are, and how I dealt with some of the challenges. Let's talk about some interesting aspects of the code. I use Python since it is fairly straightforward to do simple things like this project. This portion of the code sets up the Pi to control the sensor. The Pi sends 10 microsecond pulses to the sensor and estimates the distance based on the time it takes for the pulse to get back. Next is estimating position, velocity, and acceleration of the object. Now this was a challenge. The sensor error is about plus or minus an inch, and this error impacts greatly the estimates of velocity and acceleration. Calculating statistics from many readings would decrease the error. The issue is, after all, this is a low-cost sensor, and it overheats if too many measurements are taken too fast. In other words, you have to balance accuracy and reliability. So next, let's take a look at controlling the fan itself. Controlling the fan is pretty cool. 
This four-wire fan is controlled by modulating the pulses sent to it. In other words, pulse width modulation. The fan also sends back to the Pi a measure of how fast it is turning. Another interesting piece of the code is how it learns. The first level of learning determines more or less how much airflow is needed to start levitating the object. The second level of learning starts tweaking the airflow to make the object float to the desired level. It is looking at how far it is from the height goal and the velocity and adjusts accordingly. The third level of learning looks at the measure of error during the past 10 cycles and tweaks the degree by which the second level of learning adjusts. Now let's take a look at the system in action and I'll highlight when it is learning each level. Let's run the system. Initially, it increases airflow until the object starts floating. Once it determines at what airflow level floating starts, it starts tweaking the second level. The third level of learning happens every 10 cycles as it estimates how much off the high goal the object is on average. Now, some people stress that the Raspberry Pi is not recommended for critical real-time control. In this case, I am not sure if it is the Pi or the sensor, but sometimes pulses are lost and which cause errors. I accounted for as much of this as I could, but either the Pi missing pulses or sensor error throw the system completely out of whack at which point you just have to let the system adjust back by itself and learn again. So let's take a look at how the system recovers. After a few cycles, the system recovers. No manual intervention needed. So at this point I thought, what if I throw a different type of object? Would it be able to learn, adapt, and keep the height required? Let's take a look. I found a leftover balloon from a kid's party and wondered how it would work. It actually worked out great. The balloon is half inflated, so the rubber is soft and spongy. The balloon dampens the effects of the rotation and turbulence of the airflow. In other words, it is just easier to control. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed building this and learned quite a lot. As for next steps, I am thinking this interface is ugly. It looks from the 80s. So perhaps a nice graphical interface is in order. So, Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.